What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So today's episode is gonna be a little bit different than usual, but because of the requests I keep finding myself getting, I'm hoping you're gonna find it useful. So we do a whole bunch of leather projects and after almost every one, I get a certain percentage of comments below asking me for the templates for those projects. Now in the past, I've been kind of reticent to do this because I generally make all of those things to fit me, right? So if I give you those templates, they're gonna fit me, not you. Instead, I usually show you how to make those templates so that you can make them yourself, custom to your own sizes and whatnot. Not gonna lie though, some of the reason is because I didn't know how to digitize my templates to give them to you. I mean, if only there was a show specifically geared towards like, I don't know, leveling up skills you don't have. That's right, I found a super easy way to take our ephemeral paper templates here and change them into ones and zeros for posterity and distribution. So if you're interested in making your very own for fun and profit, stick around while we level up this skill. Setting a scale. So I wanted to give some credit for this technique to a small YouTuber named Anna Westbrook. Link to her channel in the description below. She has some great like sewing tutorials and whatnot, so why don't you pop on over to her channel after you're done watching this video and give her some love. All right, so this method operates under the assumption that you've already made some sort of a paper template for yourself. So for example, I'm gonna be using these paper templates we made when we were constructing the Greaves of Might. So if you need to see how I got to this point, check out this video up here. So with your template good to go, lay them out on a flat surface as neatly as possible. Now, assuming your patterns are larger than an eight by 11 piece of printer paper here, the finished result is gonna end up printing over multiple sheets. And we wanna keep that as much to a minimum as possible. So by keeping them tightly grouped and neatly together, we're gonna to make sure we're not printing out any extra pages that we don't need. Next, and this is the real magic bit to it, grab a ruler and draw a line at an exact measurement of your choice. I use 10 inches here, but the length is completely up to you. Just make sure the line is bold and visible. Alternatively, you could just kind of slap your ruler next to it. You know that's a foot. I just didn't because my ruler is this monstrosity and it was actually going to be larger than the boards that I was gonna be using. But long ruler short, you just need something that has an exact measurement on it that you can see clearly. Now, with everything in place, take a picture. Important note here though, you wanna make sure you take that picture from directly over your templates. If you come at it instead from an angle, you're gonna have the distortion caused by perspective throwing that whole thing off. So for example, this board is a uniform width all the way across its length. But if a picture was taken at this perspective, not only would the side closest to the camera seem bigger, but the whole length of the board would seem shorter too. So make sure you get it as dead on as possible to make sure you don't get any of that weird warping from perspective. All right, so now that we have our image in a way to judge its scale, it's time to move on to digitizing. So from this step, we are gonna take that picture and turn it into a printable template. Fair warning though, I get into some of the detail on some of the simpler tools in the program that I'm using. If you're somebody who's already really familiar with like using the pen tool or whatnot, uh, this might be a little redundant for you, but we're, we're starting back here at zero. So let's work our way through it. Now for this project, I'm gonna be using Adobe Illustrator, but don't worry if you don't have it. Inkscape and GIMP are really great free programs with all the same functionality. And I mean, to be honest, most of these kind of programs will have the functionality that I'm using here today. Where exactly the tools are and how to get to them might be a little bit different, but once you have kind of the general idea down, you'll be able to work your way through it. We'll start by creating a new document and selecting the standard print size for your area. 8 by 11 for me here in the US and like A4 for pretty much everywhere else in the world, I think. Now make sure that your colors are on CMYK and your raster effects are all the way up to 300 PPI. This is just your resolution. It's gonna make sure everything stays nice and crisp looking. Now we're gonna go down to the more settings button and click that. While we're here, let's set up the title to our document. Then change the number of artboards you'll think you'll need for this project. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of artboards, just think of them as separate pieces of paper. So for this application, when you're adding artboards, you're really trying to figure out how many pieces of paper it will take to fit your template on. So for me, I guessed four for this whole project. No worries if you guess incorrectly though, because you can just add more artboards later as you go. This isn't locked in place. So once you're happy with that, click Create Document. 
Now you should see your artboards all laid out for you. Next, we're gonna wanna go to our tool panel and select the line tool. Then use it to draw a line at the same measurement you included in your picture. So 10 inches for me. Now, if you go to the properties panel, you can just type in the exact measurement you want and your line will be perfect. By the way, if you can't find one of these panels that I talk about, just make your way over to the windows tab here at the top and make sure it's selected. When I was first learning this program, it took me forever to find the damn boards, but now that I know where to look, really easy to do. Also make sure the stroke panel is visible so you can make that line easier to see by increasing its thickness. Now that our line is in place, it's time to drag our image onto the scene. If your line gets hidden by that picture, just select it and go to Object, Arrange, and then Bring to Front. All of these kind of programs operate off of layers, so every new object that is brought into the scene is layered either on top or behind the objects that are already there. Doing this, you can move them separately or you can work on a single layer without affecting the layer underneath it. It's really useful once you get used to how everything lays out. Okay, now hold the shift key as you drag the corner of your image to scale it up evenly. The goal here is to match up our two lines so that they are exactly the same. This is gonna ensure that our image is perfectly to scale with its real life counterpart. And once it is, drag it so it's positioned onto your artboards how you'd want it to look when printed out. So at this point, if this is just for you, like you're not gonna be sending this to other people and the contrast between your foreground and your background is, is different enough, um, you could probably just print it out as is. You're gonna like have this shape, the exact scale on a darker background and you can just kind of cut it out and use it then. But we're gonna make this thing look professional so you can go ahead and sell your pieces of art on the internet. So let's go ahead and lower the opacity of that image to about 50%, just to make it a little less cluttered feeling on our boards here. Then open the layers panel and add a new layer. By adding a new layer, you're adding a transparent layer that you can like draw on and stuff without affecting the image behind it. And just a really quick note on moving around, pressing Z on the keyboard activates the zoom function. And holding the space bar while left clicking activates the grab icon so you can just move the image around where you need it. All right, so next, select the pen tool. To use this tool, you just left click to lay down an anchor point. Adding another anchor point lays down a line between the two. Repeating this will just keep laying down points and allowing you to easily create really complex shapes. But I hear you say, what if I don't want sharp little shapes? What if I want them to be rounded? Glad you asked, fictional audience member in my basement. To do that, just keep hold of the left mouse key when you put down a point and move the mouse until you get the curve you want. You can adjust this curve at any time by messing with these little handles here. Now, when you go to place the next point, the curve will be based off of the last one you made. If you don't want that, just hold down the Alt key and reposition the arms until you like the curve. So to get the hang of this tool, I recommend you just kind of play with it a little bit, like lay down a bunch of points and try messing with those little handlebars by holding the Alt key and selecting the anchor points and seeing the handles go out there and messing with them. Uh, this tool can be a little bit tricky to kind of get your, get your head around, but it is super powerful. And once you get it down, it, it's actually pretty easy. So using this tool, just go around tracing the edge of your template, dropping anchors as you go and just messing with those handles until you get the curves exactly how you want them. Then just finish your path by connecting the last anchor to the first anchor you made. I also went back in with the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow and made any adjustments needed by moving those little handlebars around. And now that that's looking sexy, I went ahead and opened up a new layer. Then using the paintbrush tool, I started dropping in my rivet holes. Now, if I hide that background image we took, I'm left with a perfect representation of my template. Using the exact same techniques, I finished up the second piece as well. Then for just a little extra something something for y'all, I pulled in the tooling art I made for this project as well and locked that in with the pen tool. Again, this tool can be really tricky to get the hang of, but it is super powerful once you do. And seriously, that is looking great. To make it a little bit more professional and kind of easier to stick together, I tossed in this little circle with the ellipse tool right where all four pages meet. Then I numbered them. I also drew in this square at exactly two inches by two inches so others can check the scale themselves once it's been printed. Then I just used the line tool and popped into the stroke panel, adding little arrowheads to the ends just to indicate that it's a measurement. 
Then I added in some text to make it really clear what the measurement of that box should be. And check that out, that is pretty professional looking, right? Like I'm happy with the way that came out for like a first attempt. All right, so to wrap this whole thing up, I went over to file and saved it as a PDF document. And as you can see, it matches our template perfectly. Now you can finally start that Etsy shop and sell your creations to the masses. Thank you for sticking with me through that. I know this kind of stuff can be a little bit dense to work through. And as a reward, if you look down in the description, I left a link to download this pattern. Now again, I make these things to fit myself. Um, I, I have to figure out how to put like different sizes onto one page, but might be a good jumping off point for you. But please do print it out and give it a shot and just tell me how you like the template in general or what I could do to make them better. Because by the end of the month, I am launching the Skill Tree website. And there's gonna be a section in it where I'm gonna sell like merch and have all of my templates available and all that kind of good stuff. So any feedback to that and anything else you'd like to see in it would be greatly appreciated. Also, I wanted to announce a new $15 Patreon tier. All of the art and templates I make for these projects are gonna be available for free for that tier. They'll also receive access to contests every month to win stuff made on this show and personal behind the scenes messages from yours truly. Speaking of Patreon, I wanted to give a shout out to my newest Diamond Orangutan member. Silent Warlock, thank you so much for your support. It blows me away how supportive this community is and Patreons like you is what kind of keeps me able to do all of this. And as we go, your support is gonna make it so that I can make bigger and better projects all the time. Speaking of this amazing community and keeping everything running, I wanted to give a shout out to everybody over on the Discord and kind of show off their projects. I am continually impressed by the amount of skills this community has. And not just the amount of skills they have, but the amount of things they're skilled in. I log on every day just jazzed to see what they've all come up with. And seriously, the, the friends I've made and the kind of contact the community has there is what keeps me energized and inspired to keep doing this. So thank all of you. I love you all. Never change. You guys are great. All right, that's all I have this week. If you like this episode, why don't you give me that thumbs up love and don't forget to subscribe so you don't ever release new content. Also, if there's anything you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it in the comment section and I will add it to the list. All right, I gotta get going. I've got a lot of templates to make. We've made a lot of stuff on this show so far. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.